you got to know a day. Today we're going to talk about the Rutherford Gold Foil Experiment. Now, I've got three people here, and I have them here for a good reason. Hans Geiger and Ernest Marsden actually did the experiment. It was just Rutherford that oversaw it, and he gets all the credit. But more and more often, I'm seeing the Geiger-Marsden experiment in addition to just calling it the Rutherford Gold Foil Experiment. Geiger, that might sound familiar, he actually invented the Geiger counter, um, which measures radiation. It's still used today. It's not doesn't quite look like this, but it's still used to measure radiation. Um, and it used gold, uh, but in actuality, they used some silver foil too. But we're going to get in more into this apparatus in a little bit. Historical context. J.J. Thompson, he had something called the plum pudding model. What he did is he first discovered the electron, and he's feeling pretty good. And so he knows that there's this negatively charged thing inside of an atom. And he thinks, okay, well, we've got these negative charges in an atom. Uh, they're probably scattered throughout. It thought it kind of would look like a plum pudding. Remember, he's an English dude. Um, he would have this, you know, atom that has this positive kind of space, um, and then there's these, like, raisins, these negative electron raisins throughout the pudding. And this is what uh, Rutherford and his team aim to do with their experiment. What they thought would happen is they would shoot alpha particles um, at the gold foil, and they would pass right through. Um, uh, because there wasn't really much uh, to get in the way. Uh, and really the big thing in the atom was these negative charges. Well... They sent it through uh, to hit the zinc sulfide detector. They like asking questions about zinc sulfide. Um, shoots through, hits the gold, should hit the detector by back here. Um, the alpha particles are um, helium, actually, uh, just to tell you what alpha particles are. Uh, they are helium nuclei. They're not uh, electrons. Uh, they're just helium nuclei, two protons, two neutrons, and that's what they shot out of this, this alpha particle emitter. Well, what happened is they did not get this. Um, it did not go straight through. It started bouncing off at weird, wild angles. Um, in fact, some of them came, hit something and came right back almost at, at the emitter, um, which really blew their mind. And it completely blew up the uh, plum pudding model. Um, and, and I have to point out, I've talked about both gold and helium. Ladies and gentlemen, that's a you got to know crossover. And if I can figure out how I'm going to uh, link those videos at the end of this video uh, so you get that historical context, helium and gold. They also discover that not only is the plum pudding model wrong, but also because the alpha particles are positively charged, the only way for this to be bounce back is for the nucleus to be a large mass that is also positively charged. It's how they figured out that the nucleus has a positive charge in an atom. What he said, uh, Ernest Rutherford, when he realized this, this kind of mind-blowing thing, as he said, it was almost as if you fired a 15-inch shell at a piece of tissue paper and it came back and hit you. That's how mind-blown he was. This is a 15-inch shell, and this is essentially what happened. Oh, wow. Pretty mind-blowing. Now, if you want to get into the trivia and get really good at Ernest Rutherford, this is something they really like to ask about. Obviously, they're not going to ask about the whole equation, but they ask about S, the number of alpha particles falling on an area, um, and the clue they really like to mention is this fourth power here. Uh, it's uh, either sine or the cosecant to the fourth power of a half angle, or they might ask about it being proportional to Qn, which is the charge of the atomic nucleus squared. They really like asking that. It's an early question often, or an early clue often. Uh, and they also like talking about, for some reason, one of the later experiments where they used a glass tube. Um, they talk about radium emanation, which in reality is radon, radium A, which is actually radium, um, and then radium C, which is actually bismuth-214, um, all radioactive things, and they covered it up with mica. 
They used that in the 1909 experiment. Remember, they didn't know the actual, that these things existed. They just called them a bunch of radiums because they uh, gave out um, radiation. But that's uh, the Ernest Rutherford gold foil experiment. That's what they're going to ask you about. And again, I'm going to try to link those videos at the end of this to see if it'll work.